Clear for takeoff. Why do I sound so loud? Launching in five, four. We three, are clear for takeoff. Two, two, ah. one. Woo! 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 Oh my god! The humanity. I always knew Mark would be the one on the spectrum. <laughs> Did Zach build that racket for you? Yeah. Is that what's going on? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I hit the dome. Zach built the rocket. Mark's the pilot. Jared's the smuggler, and I am being smuggled. Dang. Damn. Just took a- You're a damn, madame. <laughs> madame Alex. Damn. All right. All right. Let's start this off. You are tuning in to the Cigar Guys podcast, where aficionados and newcomers alike gather to explore the vast cigar universe. Meet your host. Alexander Gonzalez, Mark Nikolai, his big little brother Zachary Nikolai, and Jared Burroughs. So sit back, light up, and let's get the conversation started. What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of The Cigar Guys. Of course, we got myself, Mark Nikolai, the ringleader of the group. Then we got right next to me. We got Jared Burrows and Alexander Gonzalez right down there. How you doing, Alex? It'd be better if you acknowledged me as the leader of the Cigar Guys. I think most people would agree that that is my rightful title. Well, I just announced myself as ring leader of the Cigar Guys, so we'll let the people decide. Joe Biden pretended to be president for this whole time, so anyways, I'll let you have it. What are we smoking today, guys? <laughs> Look, Mark brought his lunch on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Loser, did your mom pack that for you? Actually, your mom did. Shout out. <laughs> can, can you cut that? She watches. <laughs> that actually, that is actually, that is true. That is true. Okay, let's just start over. Let's just start over. I'm not cutting that out. <laughs> Come on, Gary. Let's just start over. Uh, All right, guys. What are we smoking today? Please, t- yeah. I'm smoking the uh, Sin Compromisio. The oh, Paladin de Dosaka. What? No, you're the you're the obviously the guy from Miami, so you probably know better than I do. Seen Compromisio? Is there an I there? No. <laughs> Compromiso. There, there you go. go. Sorry. All right. <laughs> He's colorblind <laughs> and he can't read. <laughs> Paladin de Saka. I think it's the first time I'm smoking this. Good for you. Good for you. Alex? <clears throat> I'm smoking uh a house blend? The house blend from a factory in Nicaragua that I know nothing about. All I know is that the cigar is, what would you say, two years old, three years old? All right. And I am smoking a Maduro that's been humidified with coffee grounds for the past six months. What? Something like that. So pulling it out, sniff test, it smells like coffee. I hope so. It has been sitting in coffee grounds for quite some time now. We're going to cut it, light it, and get right into it. That's a 1102 I'm glad that, uh, house blend. Alex can have his lunchbox back. Smell this. It smells like coffee. It's been not smell like your ass. <laughs> Is that Folgers? <laughs> Is it Folgers Ground? Dark no, blend? it's um, Ralph Lauren. Oh, so this is high class coffee. Very much, very much. Damn. I feel like when you put the glasses on, like not just you, whenever, whenever anyone puts those glasses on, they just become an asshole. It's just probably because I've seen you like four times this week. It's kind of rubbing off. I feel like I've seen you. Well, yeah, actually, this week was a lot. What is going on here? Anyway. Yeah, I've seen you a lot this week. Um, not a fan either. He's just glazed past the fact that he called you an asshole. <laughs> Who, me? Yeah. I called him an asshole. He called me an asshole. I, I said, where I get it from? But to be fair, I literally said, anyone that puts the glasses on. Mm. And Jared's simply just proving the point as he is now currently wearing the sunglasses. I think the sunglasses well, sorry, do have- I'm smoking a dab enough right now. <laughs> are you? Oh, you are. Is that what that is? Yes, wow. it is. It is. Jared's rocking a new beard. So uh, leave a comment. If you like his beard, leave a comment. If you don't, don't worry. It'll be gro- it'll be, I'll grow it back very soon. By next episode, it will be back to normal. Do not worry, everyone. I guess uh, one of the questions that 
we were going to discuss today is what you wished someone had told you when you started smoking into cigars or before you got into cigars. You know, what did you wish you knew then that you know now? That's an interesting question. What do you wish someone and told I think, you? I think um, a lot of times when I dive into these type of questions that are very interesting, um, I like to dig deep into um, the interesting part of my brain to dissect Creative like side. an interesting question. Yeah. Right? Because at the end of the day, when you have a question, right, it's asking you what is on your brain at the time when said question is asked. And all the question is, is trying to gather information. So when we talk about like the significance of the interesting questions, and then you get the outcome of what you want to hear. So what is the outcome of Alex's question? <laughs> I don't even remember what I asked at this point. <laughs> <laughs> Holy cow. It's like Mark's lawyer response, but there was no answer. So what's the answer? The answer would be, what was the question? Are you being serious? Watch this. I'm going to light this both at the same time. What did, I, what did I wish I knew when I started smoking yeah, cigars? Yeah, what do you wish someone told you before you start? Like, what would have made your uh, experiences better in the beginning? Obviously, we're professionals now, but in our infant phase, what do you wish someone would have told you? I, I really I really don't know, if I'm being honest. Yeah, I was just born a pro. Like, you know, I kind of just like put it to my mouth. and I think what Alex is looking for. So, what I actually thought before I actually had any kind of cigars, was I actually thought cigars were just large cigarettes. I didn't understand the difference between cigarettes and cigars, which is a big mistake. One's made in a uh, a secret lab filled with chemicals, <laughs> and the other one's hand-rolled by family members. So it's a little different. Um, actually, very different. Uh, one's healthy, and the other one's not. <laughs> Smoking <laughs> cigars is very healthy for you. Anything that God created from the earth, I think, is natural. Actually, I, I know it's natural. Yes. There you go. And if God created it, there should be something positive about it in some way. I think some people take things and abuse them the wrong way, and that's where bad things come from. But if you use them as the way God intended, then there's no problems. Correct. That's, that's a quality answer. Yeah, that's how you answer a question, Mark. How are you going to run for mayor if you can't answer simple questions? Somebody's running for president and they answer questions like that. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Sorry, how are you going to win as mayor? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> There we go. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. Any <laughs> fool can run. But not everyone can win. I was, Sometimes a fool can win if they cheat hard enough. Um What about you? What's your answer to that question? No, 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 no. Are you ever gonna answer? Because you're gonna take his answer plus my answer divided by two. <laughs> are you are you the host here? What's going on? Answer the question. So I'm the host? <laughs> Don't pull that card out right now. Alex? Yeah. Answer the question. Actually, I will say, I'm pretty sure Alex thought you could take a cigar, plant it in the ground, and like tobacco starts growing. <laughs> that, that would be cool. That, but outside of that, because I've learned that that's dumb. Um, <laughs> Wait the 15 bucks. <laughs> I wish someone told me right off the bat that there were good cigars for cheaper. Like I was going into this spending 15 to 20 dollars every time. Actually, maybe even 25 too. You know, thinking I was smoking the best, which some of it was, but. There's also really, really good cigars that are for under ten dollars. So had he known that beforehand, it would probably save me some money. So moral of the story is, you don't have to spend a lot of money to smoke a good cigar. You can spend five, ten dollars, and you could spend thirty dollars and get a really good cigar. But you don't have to spend that kind of money. So would that be like your advice if like a newcomer asked you? <clears throat> yeah, I would say. Um, I wish someone told me. That it was going to be an expensive hobby because I would have saved up more before I went into it. I would have invested more money into the stock market so that I could make dividends that would pay for my expensive cigar hobby. We can still do that starting tomorrow or Monday morning. So that would be definitely a piece of advice I would give to people. I always recommend something cheaper for your first cigar because if you don't like it, you're not wasting a lot of money. I mean, compared to like drinks too, if you get a cocktail and you don't like it you're out at least like 15 bucks yeah also i feel like you're not going to know like the nuances of like this expensive cigar right if that makes sense so you can't appreciate it yeah like if somebody extent. if somebody's never drank alcohol and you give them you know mccallan 30 year 
To them, it, it's just going to taste like alcohol, you know? Yeah. Mm. What's the difference between that and Jack Daniels? Yeah, for them, it's, whoa, it's, it's whoa, no difference. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm not saying mm-hmm. that's what I think, but to Mark's point. So where would you get the idea? <laughs> from Mark's point. Okay, one thing I wish, I, I, I've been thinking about it, actually. It has to do with, like, cigar sickness. Like, you know, if you smoke a heavy Maduro without eating anything or drinking anything, like, you're going to feel a little sick. That's a myth. How many times do I have to prove that? Without eating or we anything? You get it. You have a superior immune system. It has nothing to do with... It's, he's talking about the nauseousness you feel, right? Sometimes, That yeah. doesn't exist. What do you mean it doesn't exist? It definitely exists. I, when I, last time I fasted, it was 17 days. I had, like, so many cigars. I never felt nauseous. You're an anomaly. So you're saying I'm different. Okay. That's, yes. That's, that's, that's rude. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm literally saying, like, the whole time we were like, I don't get how you can smoke. Three to five cigars a day while you're not eating. I thought you just risen and razzing me up. I didn't know you were. Like, <laughs> I didn't know it's a real thing. Like, what are you talking about? You think I was just yanking your chain? Well, I was stroking, you know, but, you know, <laughs> I thought you're just like, man, this guy's so cool. I'm like, yeah, my belly goes through a lot. I disagree with Jared. I believe Jared is an anomaly. Um, he can fast for three weeks and smoke five to eight cigars in a day and be totally fine. Most people, most normal people, um, if they go for a long time without eating, they will feel the effects a lot stronger. So I don't know what kind of like super immune system Jared has, but uh, I would like to study that in depth. Hire a few, like a team of scientists. We can do it. To come in. I honestly believe it's because what happens is um, when you are empty stomach, you're actually so hungry, you're actually swallowing pieces of the cigar. And then you actually inhale. <laughs> but, so you laugh, but think about it. He already mentioned before the cameras were on that he chewed his cigar. He didn't cut his cigar. He chewed it off. I bit it off. I used my teeth. And what did you you swallow the other end? It's in here. So (laughs) I would say that when you're fasting, your body is getting rid of all the bad toxins. So my theory is that when Jared's fasting, his body is working quickly to get rid of the toxins from the cigar smoke, the nicotine, let's say. So that way, he's actually in a state where it's eliminating, you know, the nicotine quickly because he's got nothing else to eliminate. He's not he's not eating, uh, you know, he's only drinking water. So his body is able to get rid of it at hyper speeds. No, genuinely, I don't I don't know if I could do it. I wouldn't be able to. Do I don't it. know if like because Especially you're fasting, like you're getting rid of all the toxins faster. So maybe like that's why okay. he's not getting negative effects from it. What happened? It's like cedar flavor, and it, it takes away from the actual flavor. You don't, you don't like cedar flavor? I do, but now it's like I'm sniffing. Now you're smoking it wrong. Anyways. Um, what? What? No, I'm not. See? Almost got me there. You almost backed him up. You almost fell for it, too. I didn't. I, I was agreeing with you. Oh. So, oh, yeah. I, w- I wouldn't be able to do it. Like, not eat anything for two days. And he he was smoking Maduro's. Of course. Padrones. They, they taste so good but now but now we have the base of maduro out so next time i fast i'll just smoke those i fast i feel like those are a little stronger like a little stronger than the pedro maduro's um probably let's define this because there's intensity and flavor so it's like I in terms of the in, you know, nicotine level intensity or boldness and flavor nicotine level because and i can i can tell you why the Padrones are aged like five, ten years right off the bat. So if you're smoking a Padrone, it could be aged like six, seven years on average. So it's going to naturally be a lot smoother and less, like, have less body to it than the base of cigar, which is like two years of age, let's say. Where when you get a Padrone 1926, that's 98 <laughs> years old. <laughs> right? Sure, sure. Dude. sure. Well, when you have McAllen 12, that's 12 years of age right there. You gotta read the label. You gotta read stop. the label. Yo, be honest, I still get cigar sick when, like, if the cigar shop is too smoky. Oh, yeah. Well, that's called secondhand smoke, right? Yeah, if I get a little cigar sick. Everyone knows that secondhand smoking is worse than firsthand smoking. Yeah. We probably get but a lot it's of true, that though. Things. I mean, the worst is third hand. <laughs> the drive bys. <laughs> <laughs> what? I went to a cigar lounge in New Hampshire and walk into this building and they have a rule about not opening the windows. 
and I don't know if they even have a smoke eater or any sort of way to combat the smoke. What a crazy But role. within 10 minutes, <laughs> I felt sick because of all the smoke in there. Yeah, what a crazy rule. That... And I asked for a single, or asked for either a double or single McAllen, but the point is, this guy probably poured me five shots in a glass. And I was like, hey, I only asked for a double, like, jokingly. He's like, ah, it's okay, whatever. So I'm like, all right. He liked you. I remember that story. Yeah. yeah. So, so, you know, I was kind of, like, sipping on that. and I'm Not doing too good. But I powered through. Somehow managed to survive. But that is a good point. If you don't have proper ventilation, yeah, that's an even bigger problem. <laughs> I feel like we spend more money on coffee than we do the cigars, though. Sometimes, yeah. You're sometimes, right. sometimes. I think that you spend enough money on coffee, but then as soon as you buy a cigar, it cancels that out. So it's probably about even. Yeah, coffee has has its effect really fast. You know, within five minutes, you run to the bathroom. But cigars, their effect lasts for three hours. You feel relaxed. Feels amazing. What happens if you smoke two back to back? Is it doubled the effect? Maybe. I don't know though. If it's the same one, I'd say yes. If it's a different cigar, it'd be a different flavor, but your palate's already tainted from the previous cigar. Then mm. other than that, taint. So you gotta like. Uh, <laughs> so you, you gotta like have some water in between things like this. Yeah, I think another advice I would give would be like, don't be afraid to try different stuff. I've used that line on people a lot. <laughs> How's that work for you? <laughs> I'm pretty successful, I think. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know what I mean? Because people see, like they hear like Cohiba and they hear Monte Cristo all the time, so they, they're gonna like be, like a lot of new people like gravitate towards like those. Yeah, the big name brands. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, when there's like, I, Kellogg's, yeah, yeah. Yeah, when there's better cigars out there, I think. Yeah, and that comes from just the same people repeating these, you know, two or three names. Oh my. Neighbor smokes Monte Cristo. My friend told me to get Cohiba. So they go in just hearing that and not knowing that there's plenty of other options out there that arguably are better. Um, that's a great piece of advice. I mean, when I didn't know anything about cigars, I went in only knowing Padron just because someone told me Padron's best and arguably is. But I had no idea of anything else. So what else am I going to do besides go in and say, hey, can I get a Padron? Well, if you already know the best is... Do you yeah. need any other options outside of the best option? Yeah, I mean, like Padron, Besa, those really are all you need. Mm-hmm. But it's okay to experiment outside of that. So to piggyback off Mark's I've also point, used that line a few times. How'd that work out? <laughs> I'm pretty happy. <laughs> <laughs> piggybacking off of Mark's point is... You're piggybacking off of Mark a lot. Going though. into... I like piggybacking <laughs> on Mark. Um, Can you demonstrate? <laughs> when you do go in for your first time or your first few times, uh, you can ask the tobacconist, someone that works there, for recommendations. Say you're new to cigar smoking, um, and they'll give you recommendations. Tell them you want to spend like less than ten dollars. They can give you a few options that are maybe on the lighter side. Ask them you want more flavor. Right. Um, and, and if they give you a flavored one, just go to the next guy. Right. Don't <laughs> go in smoking infused cigars. That's our recommendation. Some people like it, but we recommend you smoking a natural cigar that's not infused, not flavored. So when I say a cigar that has good flavor, it's the natural flavor that comes from the tobacco. Some cigars are more flavorful than others when it comes to that regard. And what's your favorite flavor cigar? What would you say? Flavored <laughs> cigar? <laughs> But yeah, I mean, you heard, you, uh, you heard the question. <laughs> I'm trying to piggyback. Like infused? He's, trying piggy, to piggyback he's piggybacking off the conversation. So triple piggyback. <laughs> um, I don't have any... Demonstration later. I don't have any favorites. Why? Because you like them all so much? <laughs> 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 I, I will say, I did admit um, on a video that if you were to smoke a flavored cigar, I would recommend a Java Mint because it's more natural. It's closer to natural flavors as opposed to like... The super sweet, like, blueberry flavor. And how often do you smoke these? Uh, never. But so How do you know if you never smoked it? I, I, I never said that I haven't smoked one, but I never do currently. Mm. So I've had one in the past when I was starting. But since then, it's been probably four or five years. So you're a flavor a abuser? One. Mark is uh, zero days in smoking a flavored cigar, actually. I got, I got tricked. 
And I knew, but right when I put my lips on it, I was like, this is disgusting. Yeah, so basically, Alex laced a cigar with flavor for, uh, for Mark, and uh, what, what flavor was it? Bad. Mm. What flavor was it? No clue. Ask Mark. It's not like a... Shit, we, I, I got this for free. It was like a... Someone gave me like a whole bag of Drew cigars. Drew State Legends something. Yeah, I got, I got a whole bag for free, and uh, I was pretty happy because I didn't know they were flavored. <laughs> and then when we tried one, we ended up being flavored. So like, he's had one twice now. That should say a lot. Uh, it's kind of weird. It's okay. So, um, we'll get through it together. Are you still piggybacking? Or? Me? Either of you. I was never piggybacking. Jared, are you piggybacking on my comment? Do you still take the flavor? I, actually, I did taste. Like, literally, I only took one puff, and I tasted the flavor, like, for a while after that. It was so strong. Do you feel bad now? No. It's like literally coated on the wrapper. So, they, so even they if you it? just, even if it's not lit or anything, and you put it on your mouth, yeah, you're tasting it. So, do they spray that on there? How's it get on there? I honestly don't know. I, mean, I really don't know how they infuse you guys. Yeah, it's kind of weird. We should it's look either, at it. Yeah, it's either like I think they do put something on the wrapper, but I think they also like infuse the filler somehow. I do remember Mark taking a few puffs before he was like, oh, oh I hate this flavor. Uh. <laughs> he had the moment of realization, like, oh, I shouldn't be smoking this. Yeah, I'm on camera right now. I'm like, this is so bad. <laughs> <laughs> but at the end of the day, smoke what you enjoy. Uh, we're just going to tell you that. You're wrong. Enjoy. Yeah, yeah, pretty much, yeah. yeah. People get It's so funny when people get mad at us for hating on acids. But I, I think, like, amongst, like, roast, like, people that smoke cigars a lot, it's always been, like, a, like a common joke. I'll say this, too. Anyone in the industry that I've talked to behind camera will say, I love you guys' like, jokes about acids. Yeah. Because they yeah. agree with it. Like, it's not a real cigar. I'm sorry to say it. In my opinion, it's not a real cigar. Yeah. The, whole point, the whole point of smoking a cigar is to smoke something that God made from the ground that's natural. Why take that to put chemicals on it? Might as well smoke a cigarette. Yeah, it's true. What were you going to say, Mark? Um, I don't know. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. But at least at least in our cigar community, like where we smoke cigars at, it's always been a common joke. Like, no one's going to hate on you, obviously, for smoking It's not just acid. here. It's anyone in the industry that we've talked to. Yeah, yeah. Like, no one, like, if you're smoking acid, like, no one's going to call with you and, like, hate on you. Yeah, we're not. I mean, not to your face, right? <laughs> it's it's going to be a little, you know. No, but like that doesn't happen. Like, like no one's like, "Oh, look at this guy." <laughs> oh yeah, and then too, like at the end of the day, yeah. they sell really good. Most selling cigar so in America. We can't argue. At the end of the day, it's all about money. So if they're selling, we're gonna continue to sell them. Exactly. It's crazy. But and they know they know their special place because they do get a lot of people into cigars. Exactly. So they they have their place somewhere. Mark is a. Uh, it's at the bottom of the totem pole. Mark is a there. flavored cigar sympathizer. And, and with anything. <laughs> You start at the bottom, and now you're here. Exactly. Or you should be. Exactly. I will say, like, none of us were like avid, like flavor cigar smokers ever. No. Never. We've had our fair share. Because, like I was saying earlier, you have to try different things to know what's good and what's bad. Actually, I'm thinking about it now. I think my first cigar ever was actually um, the acid. The really, the really thin one. And we have footage to prove it. No, no, it wasn't that. But it was like the really... <laughs> so it was more than one? It, it was a really thin one, and I took two puffs, and I threw it out my car window because I thought it was disgusting. And then when all your friends went away, you drove back and picked it up. <laughs> <laughs> Where is it? I was fiending for oh, it. I'm so sorry. I'll pick it up. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, so don't get too offended about it. Yeah. At what? the end of the day, it's your fault because you keep liking, commenting, sharing it. So, mm. what's your guys' dream smoking spot? Dream smoking spot. Like, if you could be anywhere right now smoking, where would you be? A cabin in the woods with like 40 degree temperature mm. and a fire. Yeah, that's nice. Jared? Um, I was thinking about just today. Don't uh, say Miami. <laughs> okay, so n- <laughs> n- number two, uh, <laughs> I-, I was just going to go something simple, like on like on the porch, 
you know, like a smash burger and a cigar. Yeah, really okay. nice. It was like 70 degree weather. I was thinking, I was thinking at a lake house, looking at my infinity pool, 70 degree weather, UV index low. <laughs> so you can stay out there longer. And I'm looking at this giant private lake with woods around it. Okay. He just had to one up. This is why he likes to answer last because he wants to <laughs> one up everyone else's answer. <laughs> yeah. And there's a yacht on the lake too. I don't know how it got there, but they probably just like, you know, transported it in with cranes and helicopters and stuff. I don't know how it works. Yeah, I just made a phone call. <laughs> <laughs> I just kind of ask for things and then they happen. My mouth is feeling kind of dry too. Maybe it's the uh, Maduro effect. That sounds like it could be the name of a TV show. <coughs> the Maduro effect. 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 <clears throat> Actually, so, Jared brings up a really good point. Uh, this is the most pure way to light your cigar. You light the cedar and then you use the flame from the cedar. <laughs> 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 smells, <laughs> smells great in here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great multi use tool. I was tool. trying to do that off camera. I wasn't going to allow it. How does it taste? Are the flavor notes changed? Would you say it's more pure or was, or was it more like cedar flavor? Well, I mean, in the beginning it was cedar flavor because I was smoking it with the, <laughs> the cedar wrapper on there. The cedar does smell good though. It smells amazing. Mm, imagine lighting a cedar house on fire. <laughs> Is that what we're going to do with the construction company? Build cedar houses? And just light them on fire. <laughs> and then collect the insurance check. <laughs> That's a joke. I would never do that. Intentionally. Yeah. Yeah. One question we get asked, too, is if you need a retro hill, which I think is a good question because you retro hill all the time. I retro hill maybe like 10% of the time. Jared never does. Right? Do you watch me? Yeah. I think it'd be like this. You, if you don't retro hail, which essentially is exhaling through the nose, and no, it's not inhaling, don't believe what people tell you. If you don't retrohale, you're not experiencing the cigar to the fullest extent. You can still really enjoy the cigar, but you're not going to pick up all the flavors that you can enjoy. So do you have to? No. But you are, in a way, missing out on the potential by not retrohaling. So you know what's a great way to start retrohaling so it doesn't hurt your nose? Is do it while you're eating ice cream. And it's going to sound crazy, but... Um, it doesn't sound crazy. It's just... I, at, just the lounge, at the lounge, they were having like... Uh, you know, like the, the... Did you get some? Yeah. Dang. So they were making ice cream fresh at the lounge. And I got some and I was smoking the cigar with it. And our buddy Tyler was like, is that, is that good? I was like, yeah, because it, it cools the smoke a lot. So you don't feel it at all. It makes sense because if you have really cold ice cream, you know, sometimes your mouth feels like... It almost yeah. feels like you're exhaling like the, the, the cold, cold air. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense, actually. So I couldn't feel it. So I was like, let me just start retrohaling with this. So I, I ate a piece of ice cream. I s smoked the cigar and I retrohaled it. And you don't feel anything. Did you swallow the ice cream first? Yeah. Okay. What flavor was it? Uh, it was... Um, was it like cognac or rum flavored? Yeah, it was like rum and raisin. Hmm. It's pretty good. See, Mark is an innovator. Yeah, I, I, I people innovate. don't believe this because on the outside he just looks like your average fun guy, but he's really an innovator. You know, exactly. like he's got his brain is constantly really, moving, constantly moving. More than just a teddy bear. More than just a teddy bear. How can we mention that on the? What does that even mean? You're a teddy bear, Mark. What? No one's ever told you that. That's because no. everyone talks shit behind your back. Oh, that makes sense. But yeah. it's not talking trash. You know, how, I, like seriously, how can we didn't mention that on the cigar guys pairing episode? Like, uh, because. I don't know why, I just didn't think of it, you know? This just like came to me as we were talking about retro hailing. I think the breast milk conversation threw him off, so we thought we already covered it. Threw him oh, off? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He brought that up. It was his <laughs> idea. What the hell? I wouldn't no, know. Honestly, I don't know. Breast milk are you drinking, Mark? 
I, I totally forgot. I totally forgot that that happened at that time. But uh, <laughs> no, but now, now that we're talking about retro, <laughs> because it's I was retro. The best milk, the ice cream. Oh, oh, oh. The ice cream, yeah. Because I was retro hanging when I was smoking, when I was eating the ice cream. So as we're talking about retro hanging, kind of the memory came back up. And I'll tell you what, dude, it's a good combo. It's a good combo. Like you got the sweetness from the. So should we all go to like the cigar lounge? Yeah, the earthy in. from the cigar. Should we like go to the cigar lounge and bring like minchies in my, with us? You know, I'd prefer Cold Stone, real ice cream. Okay, cold yeah, stone. I like Cold Stone better. It, it's not a bad mix, dude. I'm telling you, it's not a bad mix. Jared's over here making fun of it, but I I'm making fun of it. I'm saying, I just asked. I guarantee he's jealous because he doesn't have sweets, so he can't experience this. Yeah, yeah. Aren't you going there, McCabe? Your non-sugar, non-sweet ice cream, <laughs> <Just> frozen milk. <laughs> At the end of the day, that's basically what ice cream is. Yeah, it's with frozen. added flavor. Well, for Mark, it's frozen breast milk, but <laughs> <laughs> something about the consistency is just like unbeatable. It's just super creamy. <laughs> so his breast is this giant dude. <laughs> yeah, if you think about it, <laughs> babies are cannibals. <laughs> what? They're eating a human product. <laughs> Uh, it, yeah, but is a human product considered cannibalism, or is the human itself considered cannibalism? I'm pretty sure it's the human itself. I don't know. That's a good. Question. That sounds like a ph philosophical question. Well, you're the innovator. You tell me. Yes. <laughs> yes. What? All of the above. Okay. I'm the type of guy where if I see all of the above on the test, it's D. I'm picking it. Yeah, why are they putting it there <laughs> if it's not all of the above? <laughs> My thing is, like, if I see two that are plausible, it's probably all of the above. I yeah. think you should at least get 25% correct for that answer. Because it's one of the answers. Yeah, you're right. You got part of the answer, right? <laughs> In theory. That is true. How, how is this uh, coffee cigar that you already, like, halfway through? Honestly, it's pretty good. Can you actually taste, like, the coffee and stuff? Yeah, you definitely taste the coffee grounds, not in, like, a... You know, like when you smoke like a coffee flavored cigar, like it kind of tastes like artificial and tastes like you're drink you're smoking a latte. This just tastes more like you know, just like it's got a little like ex espresso. Is it stronger than like when you say you're smoking a cigar and you taste notes of coffee or espresso? Is for, it more than that? For sure, yeah. Okay. It, it like takes that and puts it like a step above. I think. Okay. Does it feel like you finished half a cup of coffee since you smoked half the cigar? That's covered in coffee? Not really. But it's definitely got more like cocoa and like espresso notes. Not the answer I was hoping for. It's got like this pepper flavor that isn't like a normal pepper flavor that you normally taste in a cigar. It's like a little different. I don't know how to describe it. Very interesting. It's pretty good, though. You had this last time at three-month mark. <laughs> Correct, yeah. And how did you enjoy it? It was very subtle. Mm. So I'm interested to see if we do this again. I want to try a six-month mark, too. Yeah. I'm kind of embarrassed. Like, he's chief in his cigar. I'm not chief in mine. It, I, I think the cedar set you back a little bit. It, uh, it has this dryness to it, though. It's kind of weird. Like, it makes my mouth feel dry. Hmm. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. Maybe you need a cup of coffee with your coffee cigar. That probably worked very well. It's almost as if you made your own Java cigar. I, don't know. I, don't I know wish someone, uh, yeah, like that's crazy. Like he almost said that. I wouldn't take it that far. How often do you purge your cigar when you're smoking it? Rarely, I think. Yeah, very rarely. Really? I do almost it a never. lot. Almost never. I do it a lot. Actually, I probably do it. If I stop smoking for a while, I probably do it almost every time. Well, like, yeah, that, yeah, you should do that. Someone actually asked a question. I just saw it. They asked um, why the cigar gets bitter towards the end. They feel like they can't finish it. Quitters. Because, because they get towards the end and it's really bitter. It's hot, that's why. Yeah, so majority of the time, if the cigar is tasting bitter, especially towards the end, is because you're probably smoking it too fast. Um, because it gets hot, and then towards the end, all the heat helps the tar build up, and then you're getting that bitter taste from it. 
Yeah. If you slow it down, you shouldn't have that issue. I think purging the cigar also helps with that. So purging is basically blowing through the cigar. So you blow the smoke out. It helps kind of push some of the bitterness. Like some of that stuff that's trapped in there pushes it out. Yeah. At least that's helped me. Whenever, I, I will say if I have a cigar that's like on the verge of going out, I will purge it. I'll blow out to help get like the, the flame going back. I've also heard if you have a tunnel starting to form, um, if you blow out for like 30 seconds, um, it'll kind of fix the tunneling a little bit. And I've actually tried this and it works like 60-40. Something I didn't know. Yeah. I would say I'd try it, but it's hard to find a cigar that will tunnel. It's just something that, like, if your cigar happens to be tunneling... Yeah, just grab a late hour. <laughs> late hour went through a really rough patch. I don't know if they're still there, but... I'm, I don't know how to justify spending $30 on a cigar that was so inconsistent. Yeah, it was great when it was, like, 20... It was a 21 for a while, was it? Yeah, it was, like, 18 at one point, I know for sure. 18, 21, now it's, like, 29... It's just hard to justify paying that much for a cigar that you know is not going to be... It, it might not be good. Yeah, I'm sure. But like Padron, for example, never had a problem with Padron. Yeah, I've never, yeah. Had, a, never had a tongue that showed Padron. You could spend 20, 30 bucks on Padron and not feel sorry. It's a guaranteed good time. Yeah. I will say, I feel like since the Davidoff price hike, I feel like I've been seeing less people smoke it. I think there's just so many better options, either for the same price or for even less. Well, you saw me smoke a Davidoff earlier. Oh, yeah, you did. That was a Cigarello, though. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Brand's a brand, buddy. <laughs> I mean, I'll buy the Davidoff Cigarellos. Yeah, I mean, you want one? 15 bucks for 20 Not bad. It's like a dollar stick, basically, after tax. But yeah, you, I think you buy them individual, they're like $10, which makes no sense. Well, that's a different one. Oh, is it? Yeah, I mean, this is a little bigger, though. It's not like... No, that's more premium. But yeah, whatever. I think too hey, a little bigger, still bigger. I think more brands are increasing their awareness either by doing events or social media, coming on podcasts. I think people are realizing that there are better options out there for the same, if not less. Where it goes back to the whole Monte Cristo Cohiba. Like those are the cigars people smoke, so therefore I smoke them. Davidoff is kind of the same thing where it's like, oh, Davidoff's a premium. Of the premium. Yeah. So I'm going to smoke those. Yeah. And then someone says, try an Atabe or an Alfonso. And they're like, oh, there's different stuff. Then you start merging out. Yeah. But I feel like I used to see people smoking late hours all the time. They were good. Yeah. Now I feel like I never see anybody pick it up. Yeah. I think they're having a hard time. They have a market, though. I think that uh, they're able to rely on the people that purchase them regularly. Yeah. I mean, you go to Cigars on the Ave. In Winter Park, they sell boxes yeah. all the time. So they have their clientele. I used to smoke late hours all the time. I used to smoke them. Actually, I, I only smoked it true to its name. I only smoked it every time I went to the lounge after 10 o'clock. Late hour? Exactly. True to its name. Your last cigar, last call. Wrapping it up. Late hour. And it hit, dude. It did. It was a good cigar back in the day. You never wrap it up. You always pull out one cigar when there's one minute left. You have to stay open. You gotta stay open. Yeah, the rule should be you can't light a cigar after closing. But if you're already smoking one. Yeah, I think they t- did they not tell you? I think they should tell you. They definitely should. Yeah, like hey, like you buy but hey, we were closing so you can't smoke it here. But now you can't smoke outside. We're talking about one specific place. What? Oh, you can't yeah, smoke yeah, outside yeah. after hours because the whole plaza shuts down. Go back home. Back in the day, we'd sit out there till 4 a.m., 6 a.m., huddle around a table, smoking cigars, drinking. Yeah, it was a good time. But the rules have changed. Dude, today I went to get uh, mm-hmm. cold brew at, this, pl- at uh, this place next to me. And I thought they brew it there. Or at least, you know, made it somehow. And then um, <clears throat> she's like, do you want anything in? I'm like, no. So she reaches in there. And 
it's like one of those Publix pre-made cold brews and just pours in there. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I just paid five dollars for this. Is it a coffee place? <laughs> It's no, it's that, that wrap place near my house. Uh, we sell the wraps and the bagels and stuff like that. Oh. It's a lunch place. Well, yeah. I was like, oh, okay. Well, I'm not coming back anymore. I was, if I can do it myself, what's the point in paying five bucks? I can breed, I can brew hot coffee, pour it over ice. No big deal. Yeah. I mean, that's hilarious, actually. <laughs> <laughs> At least hide it from me. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> I already paid. I was like, God dang. Oh, man. Uh, Lesson learned. That's funny. She's like, she's like, do you want the Starbucks or the uh, uh, what was that one where it's like the death coffee or whatever? You like the really strong one? Death by coffee or no, no. Um, look, <sighs> gotta get another cigar. Oh my god, what is that? It's like the strongest coffee in the world. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. I can't remember the name. Make, make sure that has no mold on it. I'm the uh, official plume checker now. We're good. So when you look through those glasses, is it like, what color do you see? Blue. Oh, what? What do you mean? Well, he's colorblind, so I was wondering. Oh, he sees blue, though. Oh, that's good. You can, you can still appreciate the, the sky. Cutter. The cutter? The cut the, the lid. And can you give me have my you ever, the lid? Have you ever tried you those? give me my lighter back too, I think. Have you ever tried those uh those like colorblind glasses? I I've seen about that, but they're like three hundred bucks. Like, like, on like chroma key glasses or chroma chroma I don't know. We can make a video where like we gift them to you and then you start crying when you put them on. We got them for my dad and he was like even uglier. That's <laughs> fine. We got them for my dad and he's like, these don't do anything. <laughs> You're like, fuck, three hundred dollars down the drain. Is he colorblind? Yeah. Oh, I know that. But see how is someone colorblind? Because this whole time I think you guys are gaslighting me on these colors that may not maybe they're all the same anyway. Jared, you're colorblind. Did you know that in the nineteen seventies they made this um they made this thing that like attached to your head and it it allowed you to see like colors outside of our spectrum? What the heck? Yeah. And they had an artist write up like what he saw and they had a regular guy write up what he saw. But it's like it's hard because how do you explain a color that you've never seen before? Yeah, exactly. I but dropped, like I dropped this, so we'll see how it goes. That would be like a like. Why did they stop doing that? That was cool. my argument. It's like, what if you see blue differently than I do? But since you grew, like, if you see this box right here, I say it's red. You say it's red. But what if I look through your eyes and to me it looks blue? Think we would me, never know. Think of me as the shallow how of colors blind. That way, I always see a better version I think of what could be better. I think you see a less version. I, I think, <laughs> I think of that thing, like where they see like more colors in their, like then you're naturally able to. I, I bet you just a lot of things are mismatched. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, like, like these cabinets I, might not all be the same color. No, if they're all the same to color, each other? they're all yeah. colorblind or different colors. Like if you could see more colors, like outside of the spectrum of what humans can see, these might not be matching. These cabinets. Are you saying there's more colors? Outside of the RGB, well, there there is, yeah, because we shrimp have them. like a million, million color receptors. So maybe I'm just out of the spectrum on the colors. I don't see the the inner inner no, spectrum. You're, no, you're you see less. In spectrum. <laughs> you're, you're a limited spectrum. Maybe you're, there's less colors out of the spectrum. I'm the outer. No, you're you're, you're, in, the you're in the spectrum, so you can't see outside the spectrum. Is pretty much what we're saying. No, if I'm in the spectrum, I would see RGB based colors like you see it. You're limited. You're in like a smaller spectrum than we are. He's definitely on the spectrum, though. We're all on the spectrum. We're all on the spectrum. <laughs> no, Mark. What would- <laughs> uh, NDA was only half signed. <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, what would you name a color? That's the thing. How like how do people name something that is new? Like you got to come up with a random combination of. Letters. Jablurple. Yeah, like that's stupid. For you. But it's using purple in the name, so like Well people do this all the time. Like like a highlighted green is a neon color, right? Yeah, then you say neon pink, neon green, neon yellow, neon purple. Or gurple. If I was to name a color that's the thing, I have to see the color to name it. I have to like resonate with it. Yeah, you're right. It's got 
bring about some kind of emotion. Exactly. So how are you feeling right now, Mark? Like go through the emotions with me. Not emotions, but tell me about your emotions. Let's go through it right now. What are you feeling? When I look at you, uh, a little bit of disgust, um, anger. Uh. <laughs> and so what color What color do you think about? Puke green. <laughs> okay, like imagine you're like out drinking and you throw up. Blue, green. But then the lights turn on really white, fast. White, white, white. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. So we got to combine these together. We just created your color. Blue, oh, green, white. Low battery. When I look at Jared, I think of yellow gold. Yeah, I, I could agree to that. 100%. I think of like the gold Amex card. I think of like the gold Rolex, the gold chain, the gold ring. Yeah. Yeah, I can see that. I'm surprised he doesn't have gold Cartier glasses. That's the next step. Gold Cartier colorblind chromograph glasses. Yeah, it'd be sick. Be sick. They have like some vintage Cartier glasses that are like solid gold. I see Jared in like vintage everything, vintage Rolex, vintage glasses, vintage ring. Yeah, really, I see him in all new stuff. Hey, mom, can you bring the pizza bites? <laughs> what? We're out. <laughs> okay. What do we do? Should we order Giovanni's? <laughs> I guess. <laughs> <laughs> this guy doesn't even know how to work his own computer. I wonder if they're going to switch the laptops to USB-C also. Like, what? Are you trolling me? Char- like, charge the laptop? You can. That's what mine is. Is it? You can charge my USB. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. It has USB-C ports. Oh, I, I just thought it was that magnetic thing. So when you upgrade your iPhone next month, it'll be USB-C. Yeah, but I didn't know the laptops. I thought the laptops were just that magnetic. So MacBook Airs and the previous model of this are all USB-C. Mm. <clears throat> Interesting. I think everything's going to be USB-C until they find a new charging port that's better. Jared, you should contact your Cartier rep and see if they have solid gold glasses. Cartier. Yeah. Or uh, Tiffany. You know, it's funny. One of the last times... Did you did you skip the last time we went out to... Yeah, like, he wasn't there. At uh, London House. Yeah, they had a rep there. Oh, really? Yeah. Did he know you... Like, was he able to tell that those all uh, Tiffany? Yeah, yeah. Well, that's, really, that's, that's the whole story, actually. <laughs> We were like, yeah, Jared skipped out on his New York trip. Can you like make that happen again? Did you tell him about that? Yeah, I did. And he says, yeah, you really missed out. You had to attend all the events when you're, you know, when they're offered. Yeah. That's Jared's biggest. Jared's downfall. Bi- biggest mistake of his life. I have the text though. All I said was he mentioned verbally that there's a New York trip. But I don't remember, you know, were they actually offering the Tiffany Rolex edition. I don't know if they're actually offering. Oh, uh, I mean, I think if they were paying for you to go up there, they would have you. You were on the list to buy one. <sighs> That'd be pretty cool. Yeah, they fly you up there and they're like, "Here, here it is." Well, see ya. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I'd imagine if you were, if they were paying for you or a hotel and everything to go up there, you were definitely on the list to buy one. That'd be awesome. Go up there and just be like, "Oh, sorry, I've got my credit card at home." And <laughs> dude, if you would have bought that watch, you could have sold it and been a millionaire instantly. Imagine, I mean, people bought a 50K watch and sold it for like $3 million. <clears throat> so what are we going to call our construction company? <laughs> Two-headed eagle construction. I think it should be called uh, J&M. I like J- that going to be my uh, financier. Is that wise? What we like to do at uh, J&M Construction is that we like to live in the house with you for at least the first month. <laughs> to make sure everything goes smoothly. <laughs> make sure everything goes smoothly. That's how we guarantee. Make sure all the cabinets are working. That is how we guarantee that first year that you don't avoid that warranty. Anything we do, you do, <laughs> essentially, we can replace in that first year. But I have to take the master bedroom. I'm sorry. Your wife can come to make sure that it's it's comfortable. Well, it's always <laughs> up to the wife anyway, so... Optional, not required, but also you sign the papers saying what's required. (laughs) (laughs) 
So what does this construction company do? Is it only residential? Well, we have this idea for a shed. Whether it's going to be thirty five hundred dollars or fifteen grand, I'm not really sure. <laughs> I'm having I'm subcontracting out the numbers to Zach as we speak. The I numbers, thought you were the finance guy. No, no, he's crunching the numbers. We have to have our aerospace engineer crunch the numbers. He's giving an effective eleven five. Mark was pricing out thirteen five to fifteen thousand dollars for a concrete shed. <laughs> I, I was saying lower. He was saying fifteen. Either way, we're going to be under budget and out of time. <laughs> <laughs> we're never going to finish, but we're under budget. It's okay. <laughs> How's the project going? Oh, it's very delayed, but we're very under budget. <laughs> it's okay. Mm-hmm. Better to be over budget and delayed. Better not to be. If Mark shows up as a superintendent as like as your pro- on a project, and he's like eating like a sandwich. So does Mark just show up and like Coke in one hand, and he's like, "Yeah, progress is going along. We're progressing." So his job <laughs> is just to show up and say, "Good job." I make sure I do all the scheduling, estimating, financing, and then when progress is done, you pay me. I charge a standard fifty percent markup fee. So, it, so let me, uh, fix that for you. So we have a miscellaneous tag, you know, at the, what we would do is we really compartmentalize all of our, uh, <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking, I, I lost what I was going to say. No, yeah, you, you, you do an itemized receipt, but there's like 15 miscellaneous items on there. Yeah, yeah. So the invoice, you know, it's usually about 10 pages on paper, but, uh, there's a miscellaneous section that pays for me and Mark's lunches, breakfasts. Of course. Uh, you know, he, he likes to, uh, I don't do this person, but he likes a tanning bed occasionally. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's part of the, uh, mental health bonus we get. Men's mental health. Yeah. Jared does get, um, a pedicure though. Cause he, he always, a manicure. He always says like, which one's his hands? The hands is manicure. Well, because that's why I'm signing right. all the papers. Right. I have to sign all the papers. Mm. Yeah, you gotta make sure. Yeah, you gotta make sure your feet are good and your hands are good. Mark can't sign anything, so we got him a stamp. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the stamp is included in the, in the miscellaneous. It's five hundred dollars, <laughs> and I, the ink is even more. I like, I like my stamps. I like my stamps. So you get a new stamp every contract. Yeah, yeah. And I, I use a Mont Blanc pen, a new one every single time. Yeah, so it's it's in the contract. He, um, no, I, I personally, if I could lend some advice, I would use multiple per signature, like the president does, so that way you can eliminate chances of forgery. Mm. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, actually, that sounds like yeah. Your bill's going up, so my bill's going up. Yeah, yeah for you, I'm invoicing you for consulting. Oh, mm. no, we don't pay. We don't pay our subcontractors, so you're not. You're never getting paid. What we do is, since we're uh, <laughs> under budget and out of time. Technically, you never finished the project, so we, you know, yeah. sorry, we put a lien on the project. You have to finish in order to finish the project. You have to finish paying yourself. Yeah. Sorry, the world works that way. <laughs> sorry, you signed a contract. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I uh, I signed it. You signed it. I'm not sure what the big deal is. <laughs> yeah, like I don't get it. I don't get what they're freaking out about. I don't know. But, you're you're uh, happy to sign it to begin with. I don't understand. You know. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Also. Um, we do these nice, but what's cool though, because when the envelopes we give you with everything, we do this nice um, wax seal. The wax seal has 24 karat gold in it, so it's very nice. So in theory, it, it only costs you like another five grand, so it's no big deal. So in theory, if you take all the wax seals and melt them down, you're actually getting paid back yeah. in dividends if you really so think that, about that's it. That's how you should look at it. That's how you should look at it. Oh, but the, the custom stamp. Is solid gold and made by Tiffany and Co. So you gotta throw that in the miscellaneous. Mark also forgot to tell you that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, we didn't. We didn't forget to tell him anything. It was in the contract. There's a section where Mark's allowed to take naps <clears throat> during the day. Yeah, these are paid naps, not PTO. <laughs> yeah, it allows us to keep our brains fresh. We also get um, 360 days of PTO. So. That was a little higher than I thought, but five days of solid work makes sense to me. <laughs> <laughs> is this per year? 
Per year, yeah, per year. Yeah. And it rolls over too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so sometimes I work through that five just to get the extra five next year. But you don't need it. But speak for yourself. I have a family year. I want to see. Unless it's a leap year. Me and Mark also have a tough time, real tough time, reading emails. So when we file for an LLC, we only pay the initial fee. And so if the construction project takes longer than a year, well, you're working for an LLC, it's already dissolved. So I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we If it says involuntary dissolution by Florida Department of Labor, that's not us. We did not do that. that yeah. uh, we've moved on to another construction job. We're just so busy. There's only two of us. We're, 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 we're pretty slammed. And we stay, we stay busy. We stay busy. J and M construction, don't take it. That's right, take it. <laughs> yeah. I'm just surprised that you guys, I mean, it is, our, our contract is like a thousand pages long. We wrote it, so you should read it. Yeah. Do you have any questions? A ton. We're thinking about replacing the ampersand and J and A J and M construction to J A M construction, Jam construction. Yeah. Uh, where What's the A stand for? Alex, and uh, he's doing a lot of the advertising and marketing. Yeah, yeah. But most of those pro- <laughs> most of the projects only last six to twelve months. But luckily, he keeps creating new email addresses for all the new <laughs> Facebook accounts for yeah, every yeah. new construction property we have. Yeah. And they go left unmanaged quite often. Yeah. We never respond to comments because we're so busy in the field. Exactly. Superintending everything. Exactly. Any more questions? Yeah. I guess I'm in on the Ponzi scheme. So, well, like, okay. So here's the thing about you being in is that you sign a contract, an employment contract. So we don't pay you until the job's done. But never finish this. You have to pay yourself. <laughs> <laughs> How do I pay myself? Well, since I'm a partner, Look, that's that you got to figure that out on your own. Okay, okay. That, that's fine. Ironically, the idea is not bad. <laughs> no like, if you agree to do a construction job with somebody, you put a lien, say it's like 50 grand, put a lien for 50 grand, and you, the lien goes off slowly while you're putting your money into it because you have to pay it back anyways. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I don't make it sense up. Yeah. <clears throat> I can tell there's no lawyer in this business. Oh, well, we've had lawyers in the past, um, well, but remember, they didn't read the contract that. Remember, if it's <laughs> under budget, and uh, we didn't really use... Our whole, our whole, we've never been over budget on a single project. That's good. And how could you possibly get a lawyer involved when you know, we're, we're still working? It's yeah. not complete yet. Non-compete yeah. and non-complete. So. <laughs> <laughs> and plus, every every company that gets dissolved is owned by a shell company that also gets dissolved. That's owned by another shell company. That's owned... It, it's us, but it, it, there's some weird loophole in there where it's not really us. So if you read the contract, we actually signed over the management 100% LLC to you. So you actually own your construction project. Yeah. But we are the heads of the project. Yeah. So but- actually, you're pretty liable for everything that happens. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So you might have a lot of lawsuits going on. <laughs> I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> so, Jared, how's your um, Pugani doing? <laughs> it's pretty good. I I'm trying to come up with a name for it right now. Actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just got the new Bugatti in. Uh, yeah, it, it's hard to tell which one you want to drive every day. Yeah, know? I agree. I agree. Especially when you have so many. Yeah, especially when the different colors. It's like which one do you pick? Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. But I think whichever one matches your um, Patek Philippe. <laughs> I agree. Yeah, Alex. Though, how's your losses coming around? I have no idea. Oh. I just now found out about it. Oh yeah. Well, good. Let us know if you need anything. Um, we'll try to help you out as much as we can. Then again, though, there's contracts in place. Well, you know, so we can't really do too I much. Think, but I think Alex is really smart about this. He's changing his uh, registration address on his license. Yeah, yeah. So in theory, he can never be subpoena- subpoenaed for anything because he, he doesn't didn't live know. There. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. We've been doing that for you, though. By the way, so you're welcome. I feel like I'm just a victim of a giant scheme. <sighs> Why would you call yourself your part owner? <laughs> <laughs> You're right. I'm playing victim. You were co- you signed the contracts. You're complacent. I'm, I'm gaslighting. Know. It's all my fault. I just don't want to take responsibility for anything. After the recent surgery, you know, it just it's really gotten to me. 
Well, we did give you a lobotomy in your recent surgery. That explains which is a why lot. you're so complacent, which was in your contract that you signed. So, damn. That explains a lot. What were we talking about? I actually don't remember the previous topic. Was yeah, it, no, we, just, of, we um, just start rambling on about some bullshit. Some very real <laughs> factual evidence that has happened. Yeah, thank God for contracts. <laughs> I usually write a contract for before every podcast, but I just have your guys' like digital signatures saved, so I just put them on there. So you're committing crime? Well, no, because you the first contract you signed with your first signature signed that I was able to use your signatures for all mm. future contracts. This guy's good. Want a job? <laughs> <laughs> you guys see what they're doing in uh, the UK? In regards to... Like, if you post, like, a tweet... Oh, yeah, some guy was getting prosecuted for it. Yeah. His t- So, I guess his tweet was essentially speech that promoted racism so therefore he's getting prosecuted for it yeah he that's got what like, i understood from it yeah he got like like prison time i think like 16 months in prison yeah that's crazy or like anything they deem as like um that's the problem hurtful or dangerous that's the problem it's opinionated. It's anything that they deem that yeah. and what we're seeing is that it could be anything yeah oh well what did you mean by that to me, it sounds like you meant something very hurtful. Yeah. Well, like, what happens if you like criticize the government now? They can deem it as bad. That's Which is crazy. happening. We're seeing it right now. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy that's happening in 2024, you know? I think that when there's no real problems in the world, we have to find problems to solve. Yeah. That's the thing. It's like, okay, you know, hypothetically, we have a good economy. We have, you know, no one's like actually genuinely starving. Um, We have to find something to police. We have to find a problem to fix. And what a better problem to fix than speech? Mm. Especially when it's against the government. Yeah. Some guy got arrested for, um, he was like protesting and he's holding a sign up. And he's never had a criminal record in his life, and he was like sixty something, and they locked him up in prison for like I think it was like eight months. That's ridiculous. It's the fall of Europe. It's crazy. It's sad. Not Eastern Europe though. They still got time. Western Europe though, I don't know. It's getting crazy. Yeah, it's pretty wild. Wild stuff actually. Wild stuff going on in the world. What was well, the, how do you uh, use a VPN though and like make a non like you make a profile that doesn't have a picture on it or name? You think they'll still try to trace it? I'm sure they'll try. They've got nothing better to do. Like, do they have a whole team out that's like dedicated to looking for tweets? It's called like the NSA or something like that. <laughs> I think it's American. <laughs> yeah, but still, they're doing it. Maybe not to the extent, but yeah, they'll put you on a list for sure, but. They have big, well, the thing about Europe, too, is they have bigger problems to worry about. Yeah, right? Did some tweet? Yeah. How about the people that are actually, like, running around with knives and stabbing people? I feel like that's hurtful. And dangerous. Literally. <laughs> that would hurt a lot. Yeah, you think so? Yeah. And there's no, like, misinterpreting it. Like, it actually does hurt. I read something. I don't know if it's true or not, but, um, like, if you're an American and you're there and you tweet something... They'll, like, come after you. I don't know if that's true. I read it. I'm sure they'll try. Yeah. But they'll, like, expedite it to make it make sure that you have, like, you know, make sure you get in trouble for it. I'm so glad Alex did not tweet when he was in France. True. Oof. Close call. Would have been a bad... It would have been a worse trip. They tried to hold me in the airport. <laughs> Alex is flying back home. Like, oh, hold on, buddy. <laughs> Listen, at the end of the day, you can always outsmart the French. The, the, like, where do you think you're going, Alex? <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> How do you know my name? <laughs> it's on your ticket. Mm, That's besides it, the point. Like, can you pull me Twitter real fast? I don't have Twitter. <laughs> I'm tweeting at Air France as we speak. <laughs> uh, 
It's not me. This is Cigar Guy's account. You can't prosecute all of us. <laughs> this is a fast smoke. Yeah. I know how to slow down for you guys. I'm actually surprised. I'm sorry. I'm surprised you're still there. Just for you. I do a lot of things for you. I just don't like to talk about it. <laughs> what? <laughs> I think this was a very interesting episode. Uh, switching scenes, a lot of different topics. Because um, normally I'm not sitting next to either one of you. This is very different for me. Yeah, you're like sandwiched. Is it like us. intimidating or like relief? I mean, it, it's it's like any meeny miny mo here. I mean, like from left to right. I mean, like we got the new ringleader for some reason, but producers over here. What's happening? I'm not really sure. You're piggybacking off of Mark. This never happens. This is like a whole different episode. I just feel like Mark's recently been enlightened so much so that I agree with a lot of what he's saying. I'm just the smartest one out of the bunch, so I just feel like it's hard like being like a genius. As long as the bunch starts there or stops there. It's hard being a genius around a bunch of regular people, if that makes sense. I saw Mark in a dress shirt yesterday. <laughs> I had to ask him, like, did you even go to work today? <laughs> <laughs> I was, I, that made no sense. A dress shirt. I don't know. That means he was not working. I was, in fact, working. Anyway. Final thoughts? Uh, we had a lot of good topics. A lot of good discussion. Hope you guys enjoyed, learned something. Um, Question is, where are we going to film next? The next segment. As the ringleader of the Cigar Guys. Yeah, I would say... Thank uh, you for tuning in. Alex, any final thoughts? Nope. See ya. <laughs> we hope you enjoyed this episode of the Cigar Guys podcast. Make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can stay up to date with all the latest episodes. Looking for short form content? Check out all our social media accounts in the description below. I said we, we, say we cut, it, <laughs> cut it there. Why don't we just cut, we pause this one and we go back to the talk about what we're talking about previously you know what we should do one podcast we should start it like downstairs and then it'll just cut right and it will be upstairs and add, like same conversation you know what i'm saying we can do that now we're trying to do that now <laughs> let's get another cigar here's the deal. we all know if you don't get another cigar now in five seconds you can be like what are you guys doing afterwards? exactly let's go to corona then you say well she's off work a few hours so only have two hours to spend with you guys she's gonna have one cigar what time is it right now doesn't matter you have to have one cigar what time is it Seven. Oh, okay. No. So okay. we're finishing up how we usually finish up around yeah. the same time. Oh yeah, yeah, we're good. So yeah. we realistically could keep going because we normally start at six. It's now seven, but we had a hiccup, so we could keep going. Why don't we just pause and change topics? Let me chop this up. Yeah, we could do that. Yeah, because like we can't keep talking about this fake construction project. <laughs> fake. <laughs>